Chapter Nineteen of the Red Fairy Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brianna Simmons. The Red Fairy Book by Andrew Lang. Chapter Nineteen. Drake's Tale. Drake's Tale was very little. That is why he was called Drake's Tale. But tiny as he was, he had brains, and he knew what he was about, for having begun with nothing, he ended by amassing a hundred crowns. Now the king of the country, who was very extravagant, and never kept any money, having heard that Drake's tail had some, went one day in his own person to borrow his hoard, and my word, in those days Drake's tail was not a little proud of having lent money to the king. But after the first and second year, seeing that they never even dreamed of paying the interest, he became uneasy, so much so that at last he resolved to go see his majesty himself and get repaid. So one fine morning Drake's tail, very spruce and fresh, takes the road singing, Quack, 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 when shall I get my money back? He had not gone far when he met friend Fox on his rounds that way. "'Good morning, neighbor,' says the friend. "'Where are you off to so early?' "'I am going to the king for what he owes me. "'Oh, take me with thee!' "'Drake's tail said to himself, "'One can't have too many friends.' "'I will,' says he. "'But I am going on all fours. "'You will soon be tired. "'Make yourself quite small. "'Get into my throat. "'Go into my gizzard, and I will carry you.' "'Happy thought!' says friend Fox. He takes bag and baggage, and presto, is gone like a letter into the post. And Drake's tail is off again, all spruce and fresh, still singing, Quack, 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 when shall I have my money back? He had not gone far when he met his lady friend Ladder, leaning on her wall. Good morning, my duckling, says the lady friend. Whither away so bold? I am going to the king for what he owes me. Oh, take me with thee. Drake's tail said to himself, One can't have too many friends. I will, says he. But with your wooden legs you will soon be tired. Make yourself quite small and get into my throat, and go into my gizzard, and I will carry you. Happy thought, says my friend Ladder, and nimble bag and baggage goes in goes to keep company with friend Fox. And quack, 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 Drake's tail is off again, singing in spruce as before. A little farther he meets his sweetheart, my friend River, wandering quietly in the sunshine. Thou, my cherub, says she, whither so lonesome with arching tail on this muddy road? I am going to the king, you know, for what he owes me. Oh, take me with thee. Drake's tail said to himself, We can't be too many friends. I will, says he. But you who sleep while you walk will soon be tired. Make yourself quite small, get into my throat, go into my gizzard, and I will carry you. Oh, happy thought, says my friend River. She takes bag and baggage, and glue, 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 she takes her place between friend Fox and my friend Ladder. And quack, 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 Drake's tail is off again singing. A little farther he meets Comrade Wasp's nest maneuvering his wasps. "'Well, good morning, friend Drake's tail," said the comrade wasp's nest. "'Where are we bound for so spruce and fresh?' "'I am going to the king for what he owes me. Oh, take me with thee!' Drake's tail said to himself, "'One can't have too many friends.' "'I will,' says he. "'But with your battalion to drag along you will soon be tired. Make yourself quite small. Go into my throat, get into my gizzard, and I will carry you. By Jove, I think that's a good idea, says Comrade Wasp's nest. And left file, he takes the same road to join the others with all his party. There was not much more room, but by closing up a bit they managed. And Drake's tail is off again singing. He arrived thus at the capital, and threaded his way straight up the high street, still running and singing, Quack, 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 when shall I get my money back, to the great astonishment of the good folks, till he came to the king's palace. 
He strikes with the knocker. Tuck, tuck! Who is there? asks the porter, putting his head out of the wicket. Tis I, Drake's tale. I wish to speak to the king. Speak to the king? That's not easily said. The king is dining and will not be disturbed. Tell him that it is I, and I have come, he will know why. The porter shuts his wicket and goes to say it to the king, who is just sitting down to dinner with a napkin round his neck and all his minsters. Good, good, says the king, laughing. I know what it is. Make him come in and put him with the turkeys and chickens. The porter descends. Have the goodness to enter. Good, says Drake Tell to himself. I shall now see how they eat at court. This way, this way, says the porter. One step further. There, there you are. How, what, in the poultry yard? Fancy how vexed Drake's tale was. Ah, so that's it, says he. Wait, I will compel you to receive me. Quack, quack, quack. When shall I have my money back? But turkeys and chickens are creatures who don't like people that are not as themselves. When they saw the newcomer and how he was made, and when they heard him crying, too, they began to look black at him. What is it? What does he want? Finally they all rushed at him together to overwhelm him with pecks. I am lost, said Drakestail to himself, when by good luck he remembers his comrade friend Fox, and he cries, Reynard, Reynard, come out of your earth, or Drakestail's life is of little worth. Then friend Fox, who was only waiting for these words, hastens out, throws himself on the wicked fowls, and quick, quack, he tears them to pieces so much so that at the end of five minutes there was not one left alive, and Drakestail, quite content, began to sing again, Quack, 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 when shall I get my money back? When the king, who was still at the table, heard this refrain, and the poultry woman came to tell him what had been going on in the yard, he was terribly annoyed. He ordered them to throw his tail of a drake into the well to make an end of him. And it was done as he commanded. Drake's tail was in despair of getting himself out of such a deep hole, when he remembered his lady friend the ladder. Ladder, ladder, come out of thy hold, or Drake's tail's days will soon be told. My friend Ladder, who was only waiting for these words, hastens out, leans her two arms on the edge of the well, then Drake's tail climbs nimbly on her back, and hop he is in the yard, where he begins to sing louder than ever. When the king, who was still at a table and laughing at the good trick he had played on his creditor, heard him again, reclaiming his money, he became livid with rage. He commanded that the furnace should be heated, and this tail of a drake thrown into it because he must be a sorcerer. The furnace was soon hot, but this time Drake's tail was not so afraid he counted on his sweetheart, my friend River. River, river, outward flow, or to death Drake's tail must go. My friend River hastens out, and roof throws herself onto the furnace, which she floods with all the people who had lighted it, after which she flowed growling into the hall of the palace to the height of more than four feet. And Drake's tail, quite content, begins to swim, singing deafeningly, Quack, 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 when shall I get my money back? The king was still at the table and thought himself quite sure of his game, but when he heard Drake's tail singing again, and when they told him all that had passed, he became furious and got up from his table brandishing his fists. "'Bring him here and I'll cut his throat! Bring him here quick!' cried he, and quickly two footmen ran to fetch for Drake's tail. "'At last,' said the poor chap, going to up the great stairs, "'they have decided to receive me.' Imagine his terror when on entering he sees the king as red as a turkey-cock, and all his ministers attending him, standing sword in hand. He thought this time it was all up with him. Happily he remembered that there was still one remaining friend, and he cried with dying accents, Wasp's nest, wasp's nest, make a sally, or Drake's tail never more may rally. Hereupon the scene changes. 
Bzz, bzz, bay and yet them, the brave wasp's nest rushes out. With all his wasps, they threw themselves on the infuriated king and his ministers, and stung them so fiercely in the face that they lost their heads, and not knowing where to hide themselves, they all jumped pell-mell from the window and broke their necks on the pavement. Behold! Drake's tail, much astonished, all alone in the big saloon, and master of the field, he could not get over it. Nevertheless, he remembered shortly what he had come for to the palace, and improving the occasion, he set to work to hunt for his dear money. But in vain he rummaged in all the drawers, he found nothing. All had been spent. And ferreting thus from room to room, he came at last to one with the throne on it, and feeling fatigued, he sat himself down on it to think over his adventure. In the meanwhile the people had found their king and his ministers with their feet in the air on the pavement, and they had gone into the palace to know how it had occurred. And entering the throne room, when the crowd saw that there was already someone on the royal seat, they broke out in cries of surprise and joy. "'The king is dead! Long live the king! Heaven has sent us down this thing!' Drake's tell, who was no longer surprised at anything, received the acclamations of the people as if he had never done anything else all his life. A few of them certainly murmured that a Drake's tell would make a fine king. Those who knew him replied that knowing Drake's tell was a more worthy king than a spendthrift like him who was lying in the pavement. In short, they ran and took the crown off the head of the deceased and placed it on that of Drake's tail, whom it fitted like wax. Thus he became king. And now, said he after the ceremony, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to supper. I am so hungry. End of chapter 19 Recording by Brianna Simmons Carson City, Nevada www.simispot.blogspot.com